Thank you. Thank you, Scotty. Thank you. Make sure you guys obviously are here at the bar taking advantage of the happy hour. My name is Renee Gardner, a.k.a. Renee the G. And our panel today is called Boss Status, from part-time to professional. We have Gordon Brown here, William G. Stakes. We have Kenneth Kenny Thompson. So tell us, how did your journey start into Forever Gold? Forever Gold was a business that I've been working on for a couple of years. I really didn't execute my plan fully until mid last year. After quarantine, I was reading small notebooks, ran across it. I'm like, okay, we're gonna run this. I'm a big fan of jewelry, I'm a big fan of gold. I'm like, I want to invest in something that will better my community because gold is definitely an asset. It's something that everybody should have, in my opinion. If we can look good and still have some flashy to be an asset, why not? Um, to be honest, Kenny Tees is actually about 25 years old. And it's a company that me and my dad started way, way back when. When I was in elementary school, my dad started Kenny Tees as far as branding and advertising. So what you see now is Kenny Tees 2.0. I came here and got a cheese stick, and they served it on a, a hot dog roll. Yeah. And I knew right then and there, yes, sir. she was to uh, bring up an authentic, real Philly cheese stick. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Yeah. What made you move forward with this full time? Uh, well, you got another cheese stick. <laughs> and they had uh, a soft roll. And by the time I got back to Duluth, it, it, it was like a hamburger. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I ain't grew here, I flew here. There's so many delectable foods in the day, and the filling of a cheesesteak was not one of them. What difficulties did you face even launching such a business? If anybody's had the cheesesteak, it's amazing. Yeah, so, you know, it's just... It was definitely difficult, but I kept going back home. I took the cotton out of my ears and put it in my mouth and shut up. And I just watched these people over and over and over. And I just started to like sharpen my craft. So Kenny, with you moving forward with this full time, were there any other aspirations or any difficulties along that line? One thing that I can say that is, I would say is unique about my industry is every day I'm doing something different, even though I'm doing the same thing. Even though the process may be the same, the customer is different, the experience is different, the quantity is different. So with that being said, I feel like I do 20 different things, even though I do one thing, which is kind of bring the customer to the brand or like. The pandemic, like, did that affect you in any way? You know, because being that like, you know, you're still a centralized business. In history, some of our best ideas have been created in some of the, like, the worst times. And I could honestly remember talking to Sarah, where we're at, our bar was created in the pandemic. And look at where we're at now. I'm going to take back off of him. And just say it just like this. My mentor always tells me don't spend people's money for them. So it's like don't ever look at an opportunity as if there's not enough resources to provide for your brand if you're providing a service. If you're providing a quality service, there will be people who will buy into your business, who will buy into your brand, who will support you because they're not really worried about the money or the funds or X, Y, and Z. They just want the quality. Tell us about your team. How do you have it? You built a strong team. Is your family a part of your team? Are your friends a part of your team? You know, is it, is it just a solo mission? So originally, um, I was just going to do everything by myself because I'm very headstrong and I like to just do do things when I want to. Um, one of the most like important people in my life currently is uh, one of my greatest friends. Her name is Becky. We are business partners now, but we were originally just friends. When there's something that she can't do, I feel that and vice versa. We communicate very easily. That's right. When it comes to a good business, everything is about like, I guess, patience and just wanting to understand your peers so that you're making your business flow as easily as possible. A lot of times we just want a team because that's my pop, that's my friend, they do this, they do that. But not every opportunity is for them. Every opportunity is for the person who can best represent your brain and your team. So, of course, my dad is a a large part of someone who I work with. At the end of the day, I know that he has my best interests at heart, even if I don't agree. As far as like non-personal team, I definitely can say there's a lot of trials and tribulations, and my advice would be, I, the best people that I work with are people that I don't necessarily agree with. I want their strengths to be my weaknesses and vice versa. One piece of advice I can pass along is hire slow and fire quick. A lot of times, I can speak as a small business owner, we are so desperate for help that we kind of put up with anything, but really it just hurts us in the long run. Business 
business wise, I was really lucky. I walked right into a professional infrastructure. I did a pop up, a pop up at a place called Bell Street Burritos, and eventually that pop up led to me taking over Bell Street Burritos, two blocks down the street at the curb. I see my man back there. Yeah. So yeah, we work we work opposite every day. He, he's a chef. How has the community embraced? your business. Well, let me back up a little bit. So, some 20 years ago, my whole nucleus was already here. So, when I think about it, 20 years ago, I should have put a cheesesteak spot there. You know what I mean? And um, have you guys been on Walmart Street 25 years? Well, actually, we're on Peter Street, which is the next street over. Um, we explain to Walmart Street. The community is a strong part of the community's. The biggest example I would say during the pandemic, when the pandemic hit, what really kept my doors over was like the one, the two, the three, the four, the five shirts, the birthday shirts, the bachelorette shirts. You may see a large dollar amount from the mayor's office or something like that, but the people, the everyday money, you can't beat the everyday money. Um, how has the Arbar community played um, a role in your business, you know? Everybody that has purchased anything in regards to like grills or jewelry or has had custom jewelry made has been, you know, people that I know, all of my friends, realistically. As far as our bar, my family, I curate and host so many parties here. We've done our pop up here. I've told people out of state to come here and work with us. It's like, it's, everything is community based. My whole motto is, you know, if I got it, you got it. What year end of the year goal? Kenty's end of year goal is to sell a lot more retail. I don't ever make end of the year goals. I usually just make small goals for like two weeks. Only because life can transition in so many different ways and I don't really ever know the answers. So I'm way beyond trying to figure out what the fuck I'm going to do at the end of the year. I'm just more so trying to think about the present with my brain and how I can develop and just build upon the things that are already created. I'm trying to get like one of the white Bentley trucks with the lights like 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 the, like in this. I'm literally looking for other business people to find other locations, other spots, food trucks, and less apartments. I'm, I'm hoping by year end that I I have five or six of these spots. Uh, did you find it for yourself that it was important to have the right location? I'm a big believer, a very, very, very big believer, and if you build it, they will come. Awesome. What was the hardest part of starting up your business? For me, it was, I'm just, I was done working with someone else. I don't, I don't take orders, you know, too well. I don't, I don't like my own directions. I like making my own schedules. I like, you know, I like being in control. I would say the hardest part, this wasn't my personal problem, but what I see from entrepreneurs is, they think that they got a business and they just pay themselves whenever they want to and work whenever they want to. Like, just because it's a business, you have to have your own open and closed hours. You have to treat it like a business and go harder than you would if you was working for somebody else. It ain't no off days. It ain't no, that's somebody else's department. It ain't, that ain't part of my job description. That is a simple message. If you understood anything from this panel alone, your business will only go as far as you're willing to take. If you're not willing to work hard for it, your business will not strive as much as you want to. Your business is depending on you. Our bar, little bitch.